Later. So that, yeah, lots to look forward to on the programme today. Uh, let's bring you some other news because the boss of the UK's biggest supermarket chain, Tesco, says the coronavirus restrictions uh, means the big weekly shop is back. Well, he's been talking to the BBC about how our shopping habits could have changed for good and the challenges of meeting demand for deliveries. Nina's got lots more on this. Morning again. Yeah, good morning, Louise. Good morning, Dan. A massive time for Tesco. It is the UK's biggest retailer. More than a quarter of our grocery shopping happens with Tesco. It employs more than 300,000 people and its boss, Dave Lewis, nicknamed in the past Drastic Dave for the cuts that he oversaw, um, has been speaking to the BBC about these extraordinary times in retail. Now, cast your minds back to mid-March. It feels like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? Those images of people frantically stockpiling toilet paper, etc. Um, that presented supermarkets with an unprecedented challenge. Now, Tesco at that time was losing up to 50,000 members of staff because of sickness and self isolation and so what was it like for Dave Lewis knowing that for a short period at least it was impossible to keep all of his shelves stocked it's it's never never a good time in retail when you can't give customers what they want and to see just the amount of demand in certain categories as I say there'd be seven weeks of of sales going in one or two days so just being able to keep up with that level of demand was almost impossible so we had to rebuild that over the last two or three weeks. I'm pleased to say that that's now uh, very well established. Things have calmed down a lot since then, haven't they? And Tesco has had to ramp up its online operation. Have a look at this. In normal times, it does around 590,000 online slots a week. That has now reached 1 million and it's set to hit 1.2 million a week by mid-May. So a doubling in the space of a few weeks. For those of us who are physically going into the shops, though, we are shopping really differently, understandably, of course. Our behaviour shows that we've been listening to the advice, shop less frequently in order to reduce the risk of spread. The number of transactions in a store uh, across Tesco is uh, reduced significantly, but the size of the basket has increased also. So people are shopping once a week, a little bit like they did 10 or 15 years ago, rather than two, three or four times a week that was happening before the crisis. It's really very interesting. Before this crisis, uh, people were looking more for unpackaged, loose produce. People, interestingly, are now going back to pre-packed produce because they believe that's a safer purchase. So it'll be interesting to see whether those sorts of trends continue after uh, the crisis. He also talked about how touched he's been by people coming to work for Tesco, not necessarily because they need the money, but because they want to do their bit. So some of his new members of staff include BA, a BA pilot, West End theatre staff and racing car drivers. And, and while some retailers won't see this period out, March was the best month on record for supermarkets. But he said that over the year there won't necessarily be a massive increase in profits. Uh, I understand where that comment comes from because the sales can be quite high, particularly in food. I think people forget the downside of 70% decline in clothing sales and 75% decline in fuel sales. And with the extra colleagues we just talked about, the, the, the cost of running stores has significantly increased during uh, and as a response to the crisis. And to sum up, Dave Lewis said just about everything has changed at Tesco and a bit like the way we're working now, the way we travel, it will be really interesting to see which changes stick. Thank you, Nina. Speak a bit later on. Look, from the oil and gas industry, and also from one of the UK's biggest ferry companies, unless the government offers more support. Nina's got details. Morning. Yeah, good morning, Louise. Good morning, Dan. Do not be texting me at that time in the morning. I will never forgive you. Um, yeah, P&O transports 15% of all goods in and out of the UK, and the head of that company has told the BBC they'll need more than a quarter of a million pounds in aid in order to avoid collapse. It's quite a complicated picture. This is a company based in Dubai and they've just given out more than that amount of money to shareholders in dividends but they say the UK government has a duty to support them because of the thousands of jobs and hundreds of supply chains which are reliant on them the government as yet hasn't commented uh, meanwhile the UK's oil and gas industry has also warned that tens of thousands of jobs could be lost as we were discussing last week the global economy has almost ground to a halt and that means our, our need for oil and gas has diminished dramatically. So there is an oversupply which has driven down the value of oil to a 20-year low. They've asked for more state support to help protect
protect the industry, including an extension of the current loan scheme. And also they want to see the furlough scheme extended to a year. But the Treasury has been firm with other companies asking for support. They rejected Virgin Atlantic's plea for half a billion pounds, saying they should exhaust private options before falling back on the state. And don't forget, they're already paying 80% of the wages of nearly 4 million people. They're offering grants, loans and reduced business rates to support businesses. And um, This just goes to show, though, the range of industries that are struggling and the impossible challenge for government, who have held their hands up repeatedly and said, look, we can't help everyone and everything throughout this crisis. Um, there was also good news, though, wasn't there, for smaller businesses? Yeah, there was some good news yesterday for small businesses. You know, last week I sat here and talked about the coronavirus business interruption loan schemes and loads of businesses got in touch, especially small businesses, to voice their frustration at the process. Basically, the government underwrites 80% of those loans, but the banks have been, in some cases, unwilling to lend because of that extra 20%. Well, yesterday the Chancellor announced what's been named the bounce-back loans. How it works, the Treasury guarantees 100% of that loan up to £50,000, caps at 25% of a company's turnover. The government has said this will be a very straightforward process. Two sides of A4 paper will need to be filled out um, and the cash will be available within days. They say it will be really easy, but we will see if that's the case when applications open this time next week. Nina, thank you very much.